kickoff match, OB413 oblique 280, edited part one. Trafford here again this afternoon. It's always a pleasure coming back here. I've had some happy memories both when I was at West Ham and since I've been manager at Norwich. We've had some good results, uh, like the last minute equaliser we got in the League Cup final, when we, uh, League Cup semi final when we were here, and then we went on to beat them at Carrow Road and entered the, the League Cup final. We've always had good games. I've come here this afternoon now and we're going to have a good game and we won't get kicked off the park, and I'm looking forward to it immensely. Norwich City manager John Bond expressing the views of many who visit Old Trafford. And Manchester United versus Norwich City is our main match this week. We also have second division action, Bristol Rovers versus Bolton Wanderers. There'll be comments from Ian St John later on and another action quiz. But first Manchester United. Things have not been going well for them recently, but there have been some encouraging signs. Injured players regaining fitness and last week Stuart Pearson scoring his first league goal of the season at Nottingham Forest. The check. Away from Barrett for McElroy. McElroy's right in behind Forrest. Good cross. Pearson. Goal. Norwich arrive holding their highest place in the league for almost five years. And their skipper Martin Peters is enjoying a marvellous Indian summer to his career. His goal scoring this season included a couple recently that brought both points against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And the cross goes in. Gibbons gets up. There's Peters. In for Suggett. Well, they've managed to get the into top gear so quickly. Reeves in comes Peters. And now let's join the players and another large crowd at Old Trafford for a check on the two lineups. In defence, Manchester United keep the players who were on duty at Nottingham last week. But in midfield, Lou Macari returns after missing the last four games with an injured instep. His influence is important, as is Jimmy Greenoff's among the strikers. Pneumonia has kept him out for six games and Jimmy will be glad to resume the partnership with Stuart Pearson which hasn't so far had a chance this season. But it's a particularly testing day for Paddy Roach. He last kept goal for the first team at Old Trafford a year ago. That was a three-all draw against Sunderland. But he also played here against Norwich a couple of seasons ago and kept a clean sheet. It's a nasty afternoon, snow and rain drifting about in the wind and that won't make handling the ball any easier. But the problems are the same for Paddy Roach's opposite number Kevin Keelan, who's been a fixture in the Norwich goal for almost 14 seasons. And he has special memories of his first game here in an FA Cup tie. Well, yeah, they're right, Gerald. It was very special. We, we came down here. It was my first game at Old Trafford, and I think Manchester hadn't been beaten at home for two years. And uh, we beat them 2 1 down here. On that day, everything I touched turned to gold. And certainly, I'm hoping for a similar sort of afternoon today. In front of Keelan, Kevin Bond, son of the Norwich manager, lines up with David Jones and Colin Powell, who both started their career at Bournemouth, where John Bond used to be the manager. There's no shortage of experience in midfield. These three together, Suggett, Peters and Ryan, have more than 1,250 league games behind them. But there are youthful legs to do the chasing among the strikers. Roger Gibbons and Kevin Reeves are both youngsters, and there's a leavening of experience from Jimmy Neighbour, who used to be with Spurs. In charge today is Mr Chelford Mills from Barnsley, whom we saw a few weeks ago when he refereed the game at Bloomfield Road between Blackpool and Luton. He might have quite a difficult job today with this very slippery top surface. There'll be a few sliding tackles, I suspect. But it's going to be Norwich kicking off, attacking the goal to our left. Manchester United in the white shorts. United looking for a change in their fortunes after taking only two points from their last six league games. They lie 16th in the table. Norwich 
are six points better off in seventh place. Here's a first touch for Paddy Roach. United with a full strength team, but one or two question marks about match fitness. Sullivan for Norwich. Peters back pass intercepted by Pearson to Jimmy Greenoff. And in again for Koppel to chase, but cut out by Powell. Sullivan. Reeves turning it for Suggett. Coming forward is Ryan, number four. Neighbour. Support was there, but not close enough, and Hill stole in, stole the ball, but ran it out of play. Ryan with the throw. Kevin Bond. Neighbour, let it run away from him. Hill, and Hill for the second time lets it run out of play. Gordon Hill just checking a boot lace. Bucker. Turns, finds room, and this kicks the pass. McElroy tackled by neighbour and indeed fouled by him. Still down on that touchline, tying up his boot. And Manchester United in no hurry to take the free kick while that's the situation. Houston with the kick to Pearson. McElroy. Jimmy Greenoff is in the middle. Koppel moving in too. And the first corner of the game goes to Manchester United. to take it, Houston up to lend height in the box, played to the near post and Houston gets on the end of it and hits the roof of the stand. Little flick from the near post, Houston on the volley, well over. Kevin Keelan playing his 585th league game today. Houston a good header, on out again from Jones, Reeves, Suggett. Neighbour ran into trouble, but suck it there again. Nicely tucked through ball. Peters coming onto it, miss hit, blocked by Nickel, and it's gone out to Neighbour. Gibbons free at the back of the box, and Reeves was coming in. Pulled down by Ryan. Bond offside. Manchester United very quick to move out and always liable to catch opponents like that. Ryan just limping a little bit. Pearson, clever little header. Jones clears. Nickel. At least a bit of variety, a throw in on this side. Peters. Powell to Keen. Houston to McElroy. Koppel. Now a full England international, getting it back from Pearson. A neat play by Norwich. No longer chopping blocks in the first division, Norwich City. Only one defeat in their last nine games. And here's Suggett, who's been one of their inspirations this season. Neighbour. Reeves and Gibbons in the middle. The header away was by Makari. Hill. Bent and ultimately finding its way through to Koppel. Oh, 
Lou Macari. Houston. Pearson. Peters. Neighbour taking his time, trying to find Ryan. And Nicol had a bit of trouble there, and that set it up very nicely for Gibbons. <laughs> Gibbons tried the lob over Roach, but it didn't work. Long clearance downfield, collected by Bond. Played across his own penalty area, but with complete safety. Powell went for Sullivan, intercepted by Cobb. Sullivan with the throw. Gibbons. Suck it to Peters. It's rebounded up to suck it again. Nice little sidestep there. Holds off the challenge from McElroy and finds Neighbour. On to Ryan. Suck it. Playing with a lot of composure, Norwich. Running into tackles a little bit in midfield, but playing with the air of a side who know their business. Jones in with a good sliding tackle to Rob Hill. It's David Jones. Played for Bournemouth and Nottingham Forest before he went to Norwich. Hill slid inside very nicely. Instruction on McElroy by Ryan and a free kick to Manchester United. It's a lovely little pass pushed through inside the defenders there. And Manchester United now forward in force. Eight men in that penalty area. Tipped across and headed out for a corner by Peters. Manchester United putting on a lot of pressure, just Jimmy Nicol left back to cover Roach, and Nicol indeed is the Norwich side of the centre circle. Good header to safety for Norwich. Koffel chasing it back, Nicol, Sullivan and a Manchester United throw. Curry, Pearson, Hill, still Manchester United with virtually everybody committed to the attack, Brian Greenoff to Nicol, Makari, everybody bar one back for Norwich, and they're under pressure to keep United out. Keelan with a good punch, two-fisted, clearing the penalty area, and relief coming with a free kick for a challenge on the Norwich goalkeeper. As Reeves, McElroy collects. Buchan, and it's now with Neighbour, and two men in the middle for Norwich, Reeves and Gibbons. Neighbour changes direction, Peters was coming in behind, that was meant for Reeves, Nicol uh, got a foot to it, and the flag was up in any case for offside. Greenoff, cut out by Peters, played on neatly for Reeves, Neighbour, Neighbour taking on Houston and crossing well, Gibbons got the flick, Peters was at the far post and didn't quite make contact, I don't think it would have counted, I think the linesman's flag was indicating offside, Houston, Hill, 
lovely trickery that sold Ryan. McElroy, change of direction, full bomb, Keelan's legs, Peter's head, and Norwich are safe. But it was good play there between Hill and McElroy, and McElroy twisted and turned, unsettled bomb, got the shot in, but Keelan was there. Copper. Forward for Jimmy Greenoff, is there a way out there? Well, he may have found it, Koppel has, and beautifully cut out by Keelan. Patience there by Manchester United, it really looked as though Jimmy Greenoff was trapped, but eventually he found Koppel, and Steve Koppel's cross, bringing out a fine save, a diving catch by Kevin Keane. So we've been playing half an hour, it's still nil-nil. This is Ryan on the break for Norwich. Neighbour, Buchan to beat, and he does so, crossing well, and caught well too by Paddy Roach. <laughs> Powell. Offside. Jimmy Greenoff. Topple. Greenoff again to Makari. And Makari crossing. Hill onto that left foot, chip across, header away by Jones. Hill again, miss kick that time, it struck neighbour. Hill crosses much better this time, but too close to Keelan, and Norwich survive again. Nickel, Gibbons, Gibbons again, Koppel stretching, and Koppel recovers. Little flick from behind there by Sullivan, which Mr Mills spotted, and it's a free kick to Manchester United. Jimmy Greenoff. No doubt that the return of Greenoff and Makari has given much more liveliness and invention and variety to Manchester United's attack. Popples cross, they're all in there, but nobody could make the decisive touch. They're back spoiling again. Makari winning it for Nickel. Pearson was looking for the flick on from Jimmy Greenoff. It ran right through to Keenan. Buchan, Hill, Jones for Norwich. Neighbour, Ryan, Suggett already going into the space. Tackled well by Buchan. Hill, Houston overlapping. Was away, but the ball wouldn't go with him. Bond, neighbour, Ryan. Bond again. Buchan slightly in two minds, and that almost allowed Bond to play the ball inside him. Buchan cut it out very well. Houston. It's a ball for Pearson to chase, and he's turned it away from Jones, and he's done very well here. Shot was deflected by Powell, no handball, as some of the Manchester United fans were claiming, and Pearson's good move there came to nothing. Pearson did very well to turn Jones. Bondu may have gone over on an ankle. Houston. Hill. 
Houston again. Peters. Norwich surely will be glad to get this ball out of play. Suckett holding it for the moment, looking round for support and gives it to Paul Bond. It's the last thing he wants. Ryan. Turned by Reeves for neighbour. Ryan again. Peters. Neighbour. Ryan turning it in. Gibbons in hand to hunting. The linesman flagged for an infringement. Mr. Mills says Roach has the ball. Let the game go. Five minutes from half time. Kevin Bond seems to have recovered. And this is Gordon here. So we may well find out how fit uh, Bond is. Hill coming back inside for the cross. Pearson. Koppel. Shot was good. Koppel kept that down well and it was a stinger. But Keelan coped with it very well. Two quick hops across his goal and body behind it. Bucken. Pearson now to run up Jones and hit the hard low one. And Jones just stabs it out for a corner. Manchester United have tried these hard low balls into the penalty area on half a dozen occasions. So far without luck. Coming up to half time by my watch, just a matter of seconds now to the interval. post corner again and a chance for McElroy or for Hill rather to try once more right foot this time and the header was missed Pearson blocked by the goalkeeper and Keelan's luck held well there it wasn't only luck He's a very fine sense of positioning, Keelan, and as soon as the ball dropped to Pearson, he was whizzing across that goal and got his chest in the way of the ball, and that was the final move of the first half. Very good goalkeeping by Kevin Keelan to send the teams in with a score sheet blank. Pearson and Keelan both enjoyed that incident, but it leaves us without a goal as the teams go in. 45 minutes to go, Manchester United nil, Norwich City nil. Join us again in a few moments. Welcome back to Old Trafford, where a blank score sheet will please Norwich City rather more than Manchester United. The last eight games between these two clubs, Norwich have been beaten only once, and they'll be pleased with the way they've contained the United forwards and the calm way they've kept things going in midfield and looked for the odd opportunity on the break. It's up to Manchester United now to see if they can turn all their forward movement into better finishing. Bacher. Brian Greenoff, Jimmy Greenoff, and McCarr. More noise from the Stretford end, they were fairly quiet in the first half. But they have the Norwich goal in front of them now, and they'll see their favourites kicking towards them. Buchan, Jimmy Greenoff, Sullivan, a bit of a tangle over there, out of which Jimmy Greenoff emerges with the ball. On for Coppel. 
Powell couldn't block it. Keelan plucks it out of the air. Kevin Keelan, the 36 in January, but still a very fine goalkeeper. Peters, Houston, Bucker. Pearson, a lovely little flick off. Bucken, Jimmy Greenoff, and Bucken goes on. Now Hill, Jimmy Greenoff streaking into the middle. Hill gets a second chance. And that's put over the top for a corner. Gordon Hill has certainly been lucky in this game. Two or three times when he's hit the low crosses, they've come straight back to him. He's had a second attempt, but he's often wasted those two. Sammy McElroy to take the corner. Once again, nine men forward for Manchester United. This time hit deep into the penalty area. But got away again by Norwich. Hill. Pearson. Peters could have been an own goal! And it was a marvellous save from Keelan that prevented it from being just that. Great dive by Keelan as Peters turned it back to him. McElroy. Koppel. Nickel ahead of him on the touchline. Buchan. Houston. Hill back inside to him. Good running by McElroy. Suggett had got back to close the space and concede the corner. or will it be towards the penalty spot for Houston? It's for Houston, but it was Keelan's fists that met it. Hill. And Hill again. McElroy stopped by Jones. Buckham. Houston. Everybody up bar Nickel and Roach for Manchester United. And it's Keelan's ball. But before then, there'd been an infringement signalled by the linesman, Mr. Boothman. And a free kick to Manchester United. Mr. Boothman indicating the exact spot. And there it is. Pressure on Norwich again. Hill to take the free kick. And a miss kick and a clearance by Jones goes to Koppel, but in steps Reeves. And now Pearson and Reeves tried to hook him back. Referee allowed the advantage, played them on. Manchester United in possession through Koppel. Buchan, Koppel, Buchan again for a shot. Good one. Well, Martin Buchan has waited a long, long time for his second goal for Manchester United five and a half years and there I guess he was maybe two inches away from it good save again by Keelan Keelan looking for this one too fisting only half away Pearson somebody got ahead to that and it may have been Jimmy Greenoff and it's a corner because Keelan caught it and carried it over the line Jimmy Greenoff gets up from his knees, got a bang on the back of the head by the look of it. Hill will take the corner. And the United fans sensing that the pressure is on here. But Bond has helped with that clearance. It's going out.
a nice precise ball to neighbor again bond and he can see his father in him and the way in the way he runs and moves it's a deflection for a norwich throw and manchester united are going to now make a substitution that uh, twisted knee hampering sammy mcelroy's maneuverability and so david mccreary comes on and that means that willy-nilly match fitness or not lou mccurry and jimmy greenoff are going to have to see this one through we've got uh, just over 25 minutes to play as the cross comes in for the diving header by gibbons foot wide and bucken will clear up field pierce Jones for Norwich. Unfamiliar territory for him, and he did look a bit lost. But he was fouled. Bond. A big jump there, and it looked very much as though Pearson went up on somebody's shoulders. There's McCurry early involved, and a foul by Sullivan, which I think was a flash of hot temper after he'd been challenged by McCreary. Got Pearson down, and Mr. Mills is taking Sullivan away to talk to him. And he's already, I think, got the yellow card in his hand, and that is no surprise. No question about that foul. And Mr. Mills strategically taking up position down that touchline. Nickel in. Koppel. Chasing the return from Houston, but not with much hope. Hill, that's Keelans. Keelan doesn't need a defender, he'll kick it himself. Houston. Query. Jones with time to look around him. Pearson coming to apply the pressure now, but too late. Bond. Jones. Ryan. The three-man attack. Ryan and Gibbons and Reeves. And he's found Reeves, and Reeves has opened it up for Ryan's left foot. And here's a goal. No, blocked on the line, I think, by Houston. Houston it was who got across at the last second as a very good move by Norwich opened up the Manchester United defence and as the last man came in to apply the touch Houston was sliding across to save the goal Koppel Jimmy Greenoff Koppel again Nickel, pass wasn't hard enough. Koppel now, lost his man well, shot was good, save was good, and Pearson scores up the rebound. So in 60 seconds, the pendulum swings, Houston clears off the line, the ball is worked to the other end, a patient build-up, Nickel into the box, Koppel involved, his shot beaten away by Keelan and Pearson just whips it in for his second goal in successive Saturdays, 1-0 to Manchester United. Bond. Bucken. 
whatever else, it's not going to be nil-nil. Offside, possibly five of them that time. Only about ten yards into the Manchester United half of the field. and let it run, appeals for handball, Jimmy Greenoff to Koppel. Pearson asking for a pullback, there it is. Header by Makari and an offside play. Hill injured in the collision with Keelan. all right and the free kick for Norwich to be taken by the goalkeeper Reeves touch for Suggett neighbour wide and that's a good ball for him or is it just too hard neighbour seemed to give it up a little bit quickly but the pitch is very holding and it could well be that there are some tired legs down there Manchester United's ball. Jimmy Greenoff. Hill. And that looked like a dive. Bond may feel he was a tiny bit unlucky because Hill certainly went over his leg but I think maybe he went looking for it a bit that seemed to be the referee's interpretation Pearson, that struck Ryan, McCreary Makari Nickel Makari again Nickel again and Keane to suck it. Neighbour already moving. And in this second half, Stuart Houston has certainly cut out a lot of the threat from Neighbour, who got over quite a lot of good crosses in the first half. Jimmy Greenoff. Couple. Brian Greenoff, Pearson. Couple. Nickel. Brian Green. Possession will do for Manchester United now with five minutes to go. Makari forward by Powell, but Norwich will get nothing from that. Greenoff beginning to look as though the effects of his illness are telling on him in the last minutes of this game. Jimmy Greenoff indicating, I think, that he'll go over and take the corner. He ran so willingly for the first 75, 80 minutes of this game, but I think it's catching up with him now. Topple to Greenoff, Hill, Greenoff again, Koppel, very clever little sidle round, but Powell still there with him, Jimmy Greenoff to try something else. Koppel collected it just as it was about to go out, but Norwich have it and may be able to make something on the break. 
two attackers, three defenders. This is Neighbour against Houston, and he didn't have the pace. Neighbour complaining that he was pushed, but I think Houston had the legs of him in truth. Peters, Sullivan. <laughs> Collision between Jimmy Greenoff and Nickel. But Nickel comes up with the ball and then sees it run away from him into touch. by Bond and a good header by Reeves coming in there or Peters in fact it was characteristic Peters you don't notice him for 10 or 15 minutes and then suddenly he steals in for a header like that in the penalty area McQuarrie, off foul. Pearson, more or less a passenger now, but only just over half a minute to go with whatever Mr Mills adds on for stoppages. Query. Jimmy Greenoff. Couple. Couple did very well. And the header was well saved. McCurry only just got a glance to it. And Keelan with those lightning reflexes dropped on it enough to beat it away. Beautiful cross from Couple. McCurry unmarked and soaring but the header just glanced it down a fraction too much, and Keelan saved. This certainly is a ground that brings out the best in Kevin Keelan. Heinzman flagging for a foul by Koppel, and so it's a free kick to Norwich. <laughs> Quickest means of getting it upfield is Norwich's objective now. Sullivan, but it's too late, and Manchester United have won. Just one goal in it, scored by Stuart Pearson. But I think that United will feel that Kevin Keelan was much busier in this game than Paddy Roach and that they deserve their victory, which halted a run of only two points from six games. So that's the final scoreline then. Manchester United 1, Norwich City 0. The attendance, incidentally, was 48,729. That's the lowest at Old Trafford for seven months. And I guess that's the kind of problem a lot of clubs could learn to live with. Anyway, let's have some thoughts on the game, and that's a cue to call in Ian St John. Well, Gerald, the outstanding feature of the game today for me was the performance of the referee, Trevor Mills from Barnsley. Now, this was only his 11th game, but he handled it with such composure and confidence that I'm sure he's going to be a big name in the game. The main feature was he allowed the game to flow. He applied the advantage rule. 
Now this can only help the game because players are used to doing this. They're used to it in training. The trainers never ever stop the game. They keep the game flowing. And if this happens on a Saturday, players have got to get up off their backsides, get back and try to get behind the ball. And it stops all the little niggly incidents that upset the players and upset the crowd. And what we get then is a, a game that just stops and starts and stutters along. The referee today kept the game flowing. We've quite a few examples of how he applied the advantage rule and it was a first-class performance all round. And a miss kick and a clearance by Jones goes to Koppel, but in steps Reeves. And now Pearson and Reeves tried to hook him back. Referee allowed the advantage. And ball by Reeves. Play on, says the referee. Jones steering it away from Koppel. Brian Greenoff harassing. No foul. Go on, says the referee, as Sullivan gets the ball. Well, nice to hear a few words of praise for a frequently maligned section of the game. The referees who, in fact, are very necessary. Anyway, let's go on and have a look at the statistics and see what our facts and figures experts have come up with this week. The goal attempts, well, they confirm that Kevin Keenan was much the busier of the two goalkeepers, 16 by Manchester United and 7 by Norwich. The corners provide an interesting figure, 16 by Manchester United, and we've only exceeded that figure once this season. That was in the Manchester Derby game, when we had a total of 17, again by Manchester United. Nothing in the offsides, four by Manchester United and five by Norwich, and the fouls also evenly distributed, 14 by United and 15 by Norwich City. Well, those were the facts and figures. We've had a few words about the referee. Let's go back to the game now and hear about the players from Ian St John. Well, I liked in particular today the front two strikers for Manchester United, Stuart Pearson and Jimmy Greenoff. Now, both these players have got tremendous ability to play with the back to the goal when the ball is knocked up to them. They've got this ability to hold the ball and lay it off, either with their feet or the chest or their head. Now, it's a great skill. The midfield players were, were McCarry and McElroy backing up. But what we didn't get was the final ball after that. This is happening, I think, because Hill is having a, a bit of a bad spell at the moment. He's going through a, a bit of a down period. And Manchester United just quite haven't got the sparkle that they had last year. But with both these players back fit again, playing together, then I'm sure that Manchester United will very, very soon get back to playing the very exciting football that we've been used to seeing from them. Pearson. Akari. And Hill with Suckett going to close him down on the line. Jimmy Green off to Copper. Houston. The ball for Pearson to chase, and he's turned it away from Jones. Jimmy Greenoff. Koppel. Time now for my man of the match selection. Today I've picked Stevie Koppel. Delighted to see the boy coming back from the international game on Wednesday night and playing with all the enthusiasm and vigour. It was great for, for us here to see it. I felt that he was a man who won the game for Manchester United. His penetrating runs down the flanks were always stretching the Norwich defence. He's driving the ball into the box, is always a very dangerous ball to deal with, and his shots at goal, including the one, of course, that United got the winning goal from, uh, was first class. He's quite a skillful player as well, Stevie, and once in the second half in particular, in the corner flag, he was cornered with two or three players, and he still managed to wriggle his way out, showing that he has got nice, tight, close control and got his crossover. All in all, I thought he worked extremely hard for the team. In fact, if he hadn't worked as hard, they possibly wouldn't have won. So Stevie Koppel gets the Man uh, of the Match award today. Jimmy Greenoff. Koppel. Koppel did very well. So it's been quite a week for Steve Koppel. His first full England cap against Italy on Wednesday. Man of the Match against Norwich City. And on top of all that, he's been taking over a new house. It's a week that Steve won't forget in a hurry. But now let's have some more action, and that comes from the second division, Bristol Rovers versus Bolton Wanderers. Bolton, the leaders of the table, Bristol Rovers with the worst defensive record in the division. HTV cameras covered this, Roger Malone is the commentator, and Bristol Rovers are in the halved shirts and white shorts. <laughs> Worthington up above Taylor that time, what more? Taking it away beautifully for Morgan, Morgan and Beta. Landsman is flagging, Beta won the ball. What will the referee's decision be? It's certainly going to be a free kick for Bolton, but exactly where is important. Yes, it's just outside the box. 
Willie Morgan on the ball. Dunn on the ball. In goes Allardyce. But Rover survived. Mike Walsh. Roy Greaves up there. David Williams hoisting it away. Anywhere will do in that sort of situation. Well, Graham Day's arms going up in frustration there at the decision going against his side. Waldron and Nicholson on the ball for Bolton. Waldron floats it, and the keeper makes a terrible mistake there, but Aitken just manages to scrape it off the line. And anyway, Mr. Schachter has decided there was an infringement by Bolton. Teenager Martin Thomas there, Welsh Youth International, who's uh, making quite a name for himself as a promising boy in this Rovers side this season. again against Bristol Rovers <laughs> Nicholson's kick Day knocking it away Jones Allardyce Nicholson David Williams, Day. Marion Nicholson, Nicholson winning it. Waldron, lovely controlled by Roy Greaves. Away comes the Bolton skipper. For Willie Morgan, what more? Morgan. And again, it was well played there by Phil Bater. Willie Morgan shot number seven, was just going to go just wide, I think, but Bater wasn't to know that. Well, one by Aitken. Reeves has got it back. Worthington, Nicholson, Barry. Gould, Barry. Blocked by Waldron and now Nicholson away. Greaves. To Watmore, Day's up above him. In comes Walsh. Good shot. And a good save by the young keeper. He was in a lot of trouble with that one, and it's going to be a corner kick. But Mike Walsh, uh, centre-back last week, midfield this week. He'll be centre-forward next week if he shoots like that. Bolton wouldn't mind a point, but they said they were coming here looking for two. Well, uh, they've got one at the moment, so the score at half-time. Bristol Rovers nil, Bolton Wanderers nil. Pulis, Gould. Allardyce tackling in. Nicholson, Walden on the right. Well, now Aitken has robbed Allardyce. He's got Hendry outside him. What? This is Hendry. Gould's on the left of the box. Gould has it. Has the gap closed now? Yes, it has. Well, that's worth seeing again there, that breakaway as Aitken robbed Allardyce and suddenly it was on for Rovers, three against two. But in the end, they can't quite get it right. Hendry will be annoyed with himself there because that could have been the moment. Greaves. Gould. Well, that's why they call him Golds from Gould. There was a perfect example there of how, from not very much at all, he picked his spot and let it rip. And what a fine save from the keeper. And the cheers and counter cheers are coming up now from the supporters at either end of the ground as they begin to realise the game is warming up. Barry's corner. Well headed away now. Oh, Barry can't turn quickly enough. Throw to Bolton.
chasing it. Gets round Williams. Clear chance here. And it's in the net. Waldron has scored. Well, that was a classic example of the breakaway goal there. The long ball to Waldron. He beat David Williams and placed the ball perfectly home. Alan Waldron's second goal of the season, giving Bolton the lead in the 19th minute of the second half. Up goes Stuart Taylor. Bolton are on the end of it. Hendry, back to Beta. The Pulis loses it to Walsh. Willie Morgan, Bolton on the counter-attack again. Walsh. Getting round Graham Day. But not round Pulis. Morgan has it. Hendry. Oh, Aitken doing well. Hendry again. Giving it to Waldron. Bolton again, they've got Morgan, Watmore streaking through the middle, Waldron's there, it's three against two. There it is for Watmore.